And good afternoon everyone. This is Ashton with Red Modeling Painting and I'm coming here with you today with, today with another paint cast. Uh, right now we're going to be working on some Wrath of King Gritzy, Gritzy models for Greg and uh, also hoping today to uh, actually be on for quite a while. We're going to also get some more work done on uh, Imperatus and uh, get some progress made on him. We're also going to work on Bradigus get some work done on him and I don't think I've got anything else ready to fully go so I may spend some time today working on Trevor Christensen's uh, from Chain Attack um, his uh, trolls that I've uh, been painting for him so I may spend a little bit of time today working on that so uh, welcome guys and uh, glad to have you here Again, as uh, I normally do, if you've got questions, make sure to put them up in chat. I do, on occasion, uh, from time to time, uh, check the chat and answer those questions as I see them. But most of the time, I'm, I'm trying to focus my, my time and my energy on the commission that I'm doing here. So uh, keep in mind that if you do ask a question, it just might be a few minutes before I get to it. You can always email me your questions too at redmodeling at gmail.com I'd be happy to to respond to your uh, to your questions there via email or on air so been a while since I've been on hoping to get a lot of work done today what um, one second here guys let me just set my my chat window up so I can see it here in front of me okay ready to go so these are uh, for Greg these are the Wrath of Kings uh, Gritzies this I believe is called a sword dancer uh, I have no idea what this one is called um, but uh, you'll remember from the last time that I did these I had done all the airbrushing on uh, on this model and blocked in all the highlights and all the shadows. Since then I've gone back and painted the mane the dark brown color. I've painted the metallics. I've painted the blue sash around his waist and I've uh, painted the uh, toenails on the bottom on the feet there. So what we're going to work on today is deepening some of these shadows a little bit on this guy. Doing metal washes um, doing the hair uh, on the model and painting that and getting that ready to go and then shading the blue. What we'll finish on the sword dancer here is uh, washes on the armor, getting the sword painted, finishing out these whites and the hair and the leather. So um, this model is actually uh, getting pretty, pretty darn close to being done as well. So I think what I'll start with is um, uh, Greg, if you remember right, on these uh, on the brown leathers, um, it was base coated in uh, P3 bootstrap leather, and then we take some uh, Army Painter um, mid tone, uh, excuse me, strong tone, and uh, wash that leather with that with that color. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do right now on the boots. That's the first wash. The second wash that we do. Um, after this one dries is with the P3 brown ink uh, just to saturate it a little bit, give it some, some color. So that will be step two. And that's that there. And then um, I was kind of going over some emails too um, of some conversations that we had and you had asked, you know, how, how am I going to complete out the white there. Uh, what we'll do there is the same way that we did the white, um, you know, here on the sash and, and on her undercoat. And that was a base coat in a Menoth white base. And then we're going to wash it in the same Army Painter brown tone, mid-tone. And then we'll pick out some of the highlights with Menoth white highlight. So I'm going to go ahead and apply some of those washes right now as well.
Oh, sorry, off screen there, guys. And also, just a fair warning to everyone watching, the uh, camera, the new camera that I have, has a screensaver function that I cannot, for the life of me, figure out how to turn off. So, at some point, uh, the Sony logo is going to flash on the screen for about 10 seconds Why I just uh, reset it. So I apologize in advance, in advance for that. If any of you guys have had a Sony Handycam and done any streaming with it and have any idea how to turn that screensaver off, please, please let me know. Just tighten up here a little more. And we're going to get also this sash around her midsection here. Make sure and get in there and then back here. you guys can let me know in chat how the audio sounds, I'd appreciate it. Made some changes in the software, the streaming software that I'm using in OBS over the last few days and I just want to make sure that the uh, audio sounds good so if you guys don't mind letting me know, I'd appreciate it. I think other than the glitch with the uh, the screensaver, my video is uh, actually set pretty good as well. So, darkening that up just a little more there. And same with right here. I'm gonna just darken that up a little bit. Come back and pick that out a little more with some white a little later once that dries. Okay. Uh, now the uh, horns and headdress here. Get the white in that. Or get the wash on that white, excuse me. Set this aside while it dries for a minute. And uh, let's look at uh, what we got here with uh, the werewolf figure. And um, you can see, uh, Greg, you know, if you look at it from the top there, you can see the really strong highlights that have been placed in. Okay. And if you look at it from the bottom, you can see the strong shadows that you know were airbrushed in. Okay. So what I want to do now is we're just going to push the contrast a little further between highlight and shading, okay? And um, you'll really build the shadow up in some of these areas, okay? And then also um, uh, really uh, get some of these highlights to, to just pop just a little bit more. So we're going to start with the shadow, the shading color, okay? And um, normally I would shade a brown like this with umbral umber and coal black and I think that's a fine way to do it right now but I want the the shadow to have just a little more color to it a little more depth to it so we're actually going to to do kind of a uh, slightly warmer shadow which I know sounds odd because shadows are usually um, cool but I'm gonna I want to try using umbral umber exile blue and sanguine base and uh, and see how that how that looks
Chris, you got an airbrush. That's great, man. Congratulations. Have you? Uh, what kind of airbrush did you end up settling on? What kind did you get? Okay. So I'm going to just have my dry palette there. And we'll start out with uh, fairly equal amounts of uh, Umbral Umber, Exile Blue, and Sanguine Base. This should give a nice purpley brown color uh, for us to, to work with. So as you can see, that's about a one-to-one -one mix, to one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one mix. And yeah, that's uh, giving us a nice reddish, deep, dark brown color. I'm going to add just a touch more blue to that. Just to darken it up just a little bit more. And that's looking pretty good right there. So you're probably going to be about 2 to 1 to 1, Exile Blue Sanguine Base. Um, umbra umber. Let's see how it looks now. Alright, so that's actually a pretty good color. I like uh, I like how that looks. Let me tighten it up on it so you can see a little better there. So that'll that'll blend really nice. That'll give a nice uh, warm uh, hue to the uh, to what we're working with here. So. So I'm just going to move quickly now, Chris and or, or Greg, and uh, get these parts shaded. Okay, you'll notice too as I'm uh, working the shadow around this leg, 
here that um, uh, you know I'm kind of pushing the color around a little bit and and um, you know using the the, the mixture and the thinned out paint from the blending brush to to kind of define some shadows a little more and things like that. So you know as you work with two brush blending more, uh, Greg, you'll uh, you'll kind of see you know when and where you can do that that kind of stuff and and how you can um, how you can make it work. In some ways, the the paint really almost becomes when you're two brush blending a, a wash in a way and the nice thing about doing the uh, xenophil priming uh, and uh, and uh, spraying you know with the airbrush is you're kind of mapping out where the shadows and the highlights are going to be You know, you're kind of saying, okay, this is where I want the shadow to be, this is where I want the highlight to be. And so when you get to this part in the process, uh, it goes a lot quicker um, because uh, you've already taken the time to, to, to map that stuff out and, uh, you know, indicate where it's going to be. I'm also keeping my paint uh, as I'm blending here, Greg, a little more damp, a little more wet than normal. And that's just because, you know, right now in the summer here in Idaho, really, really, really dry. And so I'm, I'm just uh, making sure that the, the paint is sufficiently moist uh, for me to do what it is I need to do. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I think I just want to define this a little bit more right in here. good there. Let's get some work done in the upper body here. looking pretty darn good.
Okay. And there was the screensaver, sorry about that. Okay, so I think that's about it as far as shadow goes on this guy. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start working some highlights. Now if you remember, Greg, one of the base colors that we had mixed, or one of the colors that we had mixed into the base coat was Beast Hide. P3 Beast Hide. Right there, okay. And um, something else we're gonna look at a little bit too is some Idrian Flesh. And for giggles, I'm gonna keep a little bit of Menoth White highlight around just to make sure um, it's, uh, just to make sure um, if we have to go brighter on the highlight, we can do that. Okay, one second here, guys, just getting something set. Okay, so what we're going to start with for the highlighting is we're going to start with um, a beast hide. And I'm going to put this on my wet palette, uh, Greg. I'm not going to use my dry palette for this because uh, I'm not really going to wet blend, uh, two brush blend it. I'm going to more wet blend this. And wet blending is essentially uh, the idea that um, while the paint is still wet, you're blending it. I know that sounds... Um, kind of redundant, but let me get a, a card here. I don't know how well it's going to show up on, on a card, uh, but the idea is you take uh, you take uh, some of your paint and you put it on and then quickly clean your brush and then while it's still wet you're you know more or less working the blend or the edge of it kind of like so. Um, obviously here on the card you're getting a little bit of a line there but that's because the, the paint's soaking in right away so um, on a mini surface of a mini it's a little bit different 
So I've got some of the uh, beast hide on my wet palette. That is the consistency of it. And what I'm going to do here, like in particular on the chest, you can see the, the fibers and the muscle. Um, what I'm going to do there is, is drag the, uh, the brush over those high points, kind of uh, accentu accentuating, um, if you will, um, the folds in those skin. Layering might be a better term for this, what I'm doing right now too, because the paint's very thin, so when it dries, it's, it's drying somewhat transparent. And uh, you're going to slowly build these highlights up over a few, over a few layers. Keep in mind, as I've said before, when you're painting, the point where the brush stroke ends is the point where the most paint is going to be deposited. So keep that in mind as you're working your way around these muscles uh, to pick up the highlights. And looking at how this color is going on, Greg, I don't think I'm going to be using any of the Idrian flesh. I think I'm just going to go and add a little bit of uh, the Menoth white highlight. Uh, to this uh, to this color to build these these, uh, these highlights up a bit more. And I'm not even going to highlight down on the feet here because I want to make sure and uh, give this model some sense of shadow. Okay. Take a little bit of the Menoth White highlight now. Mix it into the Beast Hide. Probably start at about 50%. There's your contrast there. And you can see how that how that's looking there. Okay. 
Now for the hair, I want to move on to the hair here real quick. Um, I am going to go with the uh, Umbral Umber Coal Black um, formula that I typically do. And I'm also going to throw in just a touch of Tharmar Black as well. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want the, to make sure and create enough contrast in the hair to get it to stand out. Um, also, Greg, and anyone else watching, uh, just share with you real quick, too, um, a tip that was shared with me by Jordy when I was at Lock and Load. Jordy's one of the Privateer Press uh, studio painters, and he was one of the judges um, who looked at my uh, Mullet Karn submission that I put in there. And one of the things he was critical of on my submission was how I did the hair. And um, I did the hair as I always do hair, and that is, uh, you know, I base coat it, I wash it, and then I pick out the highlights. His suggestion was to treat hair as, um, as an entire volume, okay? So base coat it all one color, and then use two brush blending to shade the hair, but don't shade the hair as in you're trying to shade um, individual strands and highlight individual st strands. Rather, treat the, that mass of hair as one entire volume and shade it accordingly. So if you could think of, you know, like perhaps the hair, like in this, in this example here, looking at your, at your, uh, your werewolf here, um, you can see how the hair tapers down, you know, like so almost having like a triangle shape to it. So uh, I'm assuming, you know, what he meant by shading it as a volume is uh, shade that hair um, as one entire uh, piece. And then um, take your highlight color and pick out a few individual strands. Um, he said that's a more uh, professional way of doing it. Um, I've played around with it on a couple of test models uh, prior to the stream, and uh, the results are, they're okay. I, I think it, uh, I, I, I like where it's going with, um, uh, I like where it's going in, in the overall effect that it, that it creates. And just a little more blue to this. I'm doing about a two to two to one mixture, so two umbral umber, two coal black, one tharmar black. And actually, you can see the difference between these two colors here. This is the uh, shade color for the um, skin. This is shade color for the hair. You can see the, the, cut, the temperature difference between those two, which is uh, pretty cool. Okay, um, also I'm going to use these brushes to blend with. First thing I'm doing is kind of creating a really strong shadow right where the hair and the skin are joining. That way there's a nice clear line uh, of uh, differenti difference between the two uh, surfaces and the two colors.
And when you're doing this on your own grid, you'll see like the different folds in the uh, in the hair and stuff. And that's kind of where I've been practicing, uh, you know, setting these shadow colors down at. And you'll notice the brush I'm using here to two, br two brush blend is one of my uh, more uh, used brushes. And the reason why is it's got a, a bit of a split tip to it and there's a lot of texture here in this hair. And so this just helps that brush get down into some of that texture a little easier. Even old brushes have uses. Okay. Down here on the tail now. And also you'll notice that I'm using a little more moisture uh, on the blending brush here. And that's again just to help the paint get down and do these cracks a little more. And someone did ask on my YouTube feed a couple weeks ago what um, what I'm using for um, uh, wetting, you know, moisture for what, what moisture am I using to, to blend with? Uh, I'm using my saliva. Uh, you can use water out of a cup, I suppose, and I've even done that before. That's just the way that I paint. It's quicker and easier for me to to use the moisture from my saliva. So. Okay. Oh, that dries. I want to spend some time picking out some highlights on the face here. So I'm going to go back to the beast hide with a touch of the Menoth White mixed in. Pick out some of these high points on the, on the face.
let that hair dry a little more before I come back in and work some of the highlights. So um, what we'll do now is uh, some of the um, blue here. We'll start with some uh, Exile Blue for the shading. On his sash. And this is the same blue that we were using on the Sword Dancer, Greg. And then also uh, just a, an update for you, Greg. Once these guys are done, which we're getting pretty darn close to that happening, um, I will get going on those bases for you. Uh, for those of you who are watching after the fact, one of the things Greg wanted some help on was uh, how to paint bases and he had a very specific um, scheme and design in mind and uh, so I'm going to be helping him with that. That's going to be his next installment of videos that we're going to do. So those bases are being prepped right now. I just washed them this morning and uh, once they're dry I'll get them all primed and then uh, a couple days from now we should be able to get started on that portion of your paint cast. So that should be good. Okay, so that's most of our shading there on the uh, on the blue. We'll get going on some of the highlighting now. So the highlights are going to be um, Signar base, or excuse me, Signar blue highlight, and then we're going to put a drop of uh, frostbite into that uh, to to brighten it up a bit. Here. 
So uh, for these first couple highlights, Greg, keep it pretty, um, pretty minimal on the frostbite. You know, two to one, three to one, even maybe. Um, but you just you don't need a lot of it for the first pass or two. Here is, uh, there's the highlight color, the first layer of it. Adjust my light here a little bit. And just focus on the high points, the edges. His, uh, his cloak here, or his sash here, is pretty pretty textured, so picking out the details will be fairly easy for you. And then a little more frostbite now. Now you put these two together, they're looking like they match pretty well. That leather belt around the, the werewolf, we're going to do that in the in, uh, same way I've done the, the leathers on the, the sword dancer here. So, um, See, the last thing I think I'm going to do here, real quick on him, is let's just get a wash onto the armor. And then uh, probably going to wrap up uh, for you for today, Greg, and then um, move on to Imperatus. So I'm going to take about a 10 minute break um, and um, uh, grab a bite to eat real quick and, and get a drink, use the restroom, that sort of thing, and then uh, come back on and we'll move to working on Imperatus and getting him uh, finished up or continued to work on. And then um, I'm thinking, Greg, probably one more, one more session uh, ought to do it on both of these guys, and then after that, I'll be getting started on your um, uh, bases. Um, so in the meantime, what I'm going to work on before our next video on him is uh, I'll get the leather blocked in on him, and um, maybe get a little more detail done on the face. As far as the armor wash goes. Um, remember we're just we're keeping it quick and easy here um, P3 armor wash we're just going to put that into the metals and that will uh, um, suffice for the base wash and then we'll pick out uh, some details um, after it dries uh, you know, pick out some highlights, emphasize some shadows, you know, that sort of thing.
you already see the difference uh, that Wash makes in these uh, in these armor plates on his arm. Brings that contrast out really well, and it's a real quick quick way to to do armor. So that's why I use it a lot when I'm doing uh, uh, armies and, and units because uh, it's just it's a lot faster. I do think on his sword, though, we're going to do a little more than just a wash, because uh, I want to uh, uh, bring out the detail on that sword a little more. And washes, I don't know, washes don't work so well on, on large, big, large, flat areas like that. So uh, I have reservation about using them over too big of an area. When it's small and packed detail, like right around here, you know, that's one thing, but as it spreads out, it, uh, I think it starts looking a little blotchy. So, all right, Greg. So there we go. That's it for now. I will. Um, for those of you guys watching at home. I'm going to go off air for about 10 minutes, eat some lunch, use the restroom, and then I will be back on. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, make sure to tune back in in just a few minutes. Thanks again, guys. Have a great day.